Hi everyone and welcome back to Weather for Weather. Geeks thought I'd do something a little bit different on this Thursday evening. Let's start out talking about the longer range and then we'll work our way back to the short term, which is admittedly a pretty quiet and boring forecast. But first things first, let's actually go over here to the updated winter forecast from the Climate Prediction Center, part of NOAA, the National Weather Service, and uh, they put out an update to their December, January, and February outlook today. First precipitation, odds favor a wetter than average winter according to the National Weather Service across a lot of the Great Lakes region, including around here. Now, wetter does not necessarily mean real snow. You need the temperatures to cooperate if some of that abnormally high precipitation uh, manifests itself as snow. And, well, look at their temperature forecast. You know, this is a pretty classic-looking La Nina uh, temperature outlook, uh, pretty classic-looking temperature outlook when you have what's called the negative phase of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. That's basically uh, the water configuration in the northern Pacific. That's kind of independent a little bit of El Nino or La Nina. So according to the government, uh, odds favor yet another warmer than average winter season. Do I agree with this? I cannot argue with it. My official forecast will come out in a few weeks on November the 11th. It probably will not mirror what you see here, but at first glance, I certainly cannot uh, put up much of an argument uh, with these maps. Now, that being said, with the configuration that you see here, and I agree with this general idea, I think there will be more opportunities for cold shots to make their way into our part of the country this winter. When you look at last year's temperature anomalies across North America, it was a warmer than average winter everywhere where you see green and yellow, and that basically encompasses most of Canada. And so the Arctic air really did not come very far to the south very often. We had basically a week or 10 days in January where it got pretty cold, but otherwise, of course, it was a pretty warm winter last winter. With this kind of setup, and again, I think this is generally you know, kind of the right idea that there will be more opportunities for cold to come out of the Arctic and penetrate the lower 48 states, but more than likely they're going to be kind of transient. While the cold may occur with more frequency than last winter, um, you know, I think La Nina, oftentimes we see a ridge of high pressure trying to dominate over the southeastern U.S., and that will kind of uh, put up some resistance to incoming cold shots occasionally. Uh, and so I, I would expect that to be probably the case this winter as well. So that's what the government has for the upcoming winter. And again, November the 11th is when we will talk about our official winter forecast for Northeast Ohio and Western PA. Also today, the Climate Prediction Center put out their November outlook, their initial November outlook. Uh, with the uh, new month still two weeks away. Odds favoring a warmer than average month here locally, and I, I do think this is the right idea based especially on the first probably at least 10 days of November, which at this point are looking pretty warm. There'll probably be an increase, increasing number of cold shots as November wears on, but first 10 days or so of, of November looking pretty mild uh, to my eye. In the meantime, precipitation, uh, we don't see a strong signal in terms of abnormal dryness or abnormal wetness around here. I do suspect that November will overall be wetter than the preceding couple of months, which have been pretty dry in the grand scheme of things for uh, September and October. So I would expect more rain in November than we have had over the last couple of months. In the meantime, this morning's lows were pretty interesting. Uh, you know, we give you a singular number a lot of times when we when we talk about forecasts on television and online, but a night like last night, a single number really doesn't uh, do the kind of night it was justice. Where the clouds were tough to break all night, it stayed mostly in the middle and upper 30s. And that was in our southern areas especially. The clouds thinned out fairly quickly overnight in our northern zones, you know, kind of I-80 and northward. Uh, primarily, and that allowed temperatures to get pretty cold. In fact, at the airport, we touched freezing last night. We weren't expecting a freezing temperature at the airport until tonight, but it actually occurred last night, and that officially puts an end to our growing season, uh, according to the official observations at the Youngstown Warren Regional Airport in Vienna. Growing season, the number of days between the last freeze in spring and the first freeze in the autumn season. We clocked in at about 175 this year. About 163 is our long-term average, so it was a longer-than-average growing season. Our last freeze back in the spring occurred on April 25th. Today's uh, first freeze of the fall, just about on target for the 30-year average, which is in the middle of October. That's when we typically see our first freezing temperature of the fall season officially at the airport. In the meantime, look up this evening if you are uh, especially watching this video before, say, 9 o'clock. Um, still a pretty good chance of seeing 
The comet that's been visible all week, we have no clouds overhead this evening. Now, the comet is getting dimmer with time. It's not as bright as it was a few nights ago. It's also a little higher in the sky than it was a few nights ago as the comet continues to move away from Earth. This evening and tomorrow evening, crystal clear skies. Look to the west. And also, coming up tonight is the big full moon. Uh, technically full last night into tonight, but 99.9% .9 full. It's the full hunter's moon in October. This, of course, rising... Uh, just after sunset in the eastern sky and it will be a uh, moonlit night tonight and we'll have a moonlit sky tomorrow night as well because there's not a cloud to be found pretty much except for a few wispy cirrus clouds here and there which aren't being picked up on the satellite there's not a cloud to be found for states i mean it's it's hundreds of miles in most directions before you find any legitimate cloud cover pretty much confined to areas just off the east coast and then way up to the west of the twin cities um, it is a crystal clear sky in a lot of locations now the National Weather Service office in Cleveland today uh, put out a statement saying they won't issue any more frost and freeze products for kind of this part of their coverage area where a hard freeze occurred in a lot of places last night. With fewer places dropping into the 20s uh, to around 30 last night in kind of their eastern Ohio zones, um, they issued freeze warnings and, free and uh, frost advisories for tonight. But this is probably going to be the last night that most of our TV viewing area will be under some sort of cold weather alert with the uh, end of the growing season and you know the fact that uh, you know most places will probably drop to or even below freezing tonight uh, the frost and freeze program if you will will be discontinued probably after tonight at least for the Cleveland National Weather Service area of jurisdiction in the meantime high school football forecast for Friday night middle October at its finest a clear sky temperatures milder in the afternoon but cooling off quickly towards sunset tomorrow evening because the wind will be calm the sky will be clear. We're going to have radiational cooling out the wazoo again tomorrow night, and that means it's going to cool off really quickly once the sun goes down, and we probably have some frost to contend with once again Saturday morning. But otherwise, high pressure just sits overhead or just to our east for the next few days, and I mean not a cloud in the sky aside from a random cumulus cloud maybe here and there all the way through Saturday and most of Sunday as well. Penguin game day forecast. It's a 6 p.m. kickoff against South Dakota at the Ice Castle Saturday evening and much like our high school football forecast for Friday evening, clear skies Saturday evening and just like Friday evening it'll cool off pretty quickly after sunset. So weekend afternoon temperature 68 Saturday and 70 on Sunday. I think the warming trend it will continue early next week. I think we'll see 72, even 73, 74 in some spots during the first half of next week. There will be a midweek cool front. It's a fairly weak one. It will knock our temperatures back from the lower 70s to the lower 60s for a couple of days during the tail end of next week. But by the tail end of next week, around the 24th, 25th of October, hey, that's pretty much par for the course. That's pretty close to average, 60, 61 degrees for daytime highs. So yes, it'll, it'll cool down towards the end of next week, but it won't be as chilly as some of our days this week. It was, you know, uh, in the 40s and lower 50s for much of the afternoon hours this week before the sun came out today. In the meantime, thanks for watching on this Thursday evening. Have a great Friday, a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you back here Monday for a fresh edition of the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video.